Welcome to Astronomy Daily, your source for the latest in space and astronomy news. I'm your host, Anna, and today we have some exciting topics to discuss. First up, we dive into the fate of a newly discovered comet, Tsuchinshan Atlas, which has sparked both enthusiasm and debate among astronomers. Next, we explore a daring mission by the European Space Agency as their Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, or JUICE, prepares for a groundbreaking lunar Earth flyby. Finally, we'll highlight a musical milestone in space communication as NASA beams Missy Elliott's hip-hop track, The Rain, Supa Dupa Fly, to Venus. We have an episode packed with celestial wonders and cutting-edge science, so let's get started. First up, let's talk about Comet Tsuchinshan Atlas, officially known as C2023A3. This intriguing celestial object discovered earlier this year on January 9th at the Purple Mountain Observatory's Xu Yi Station in China has captured the imaginations of astronomers and stargazers alike. Initially, it was lost, but then rediscovered 44 days later at the Atlas Station in South Africa. There was a wave of excitement with predictions that it could become a bright, naked-eye object by fall 2024. However, a recent technical paper released on July 9th by Dr. Zedanek Sekanina, a highly respected comet expert and former NASA JPL scientist, has turned some of that excitement into concern. Dr. Sekanina suggests that comet Tsuchinshan Atlas may not survive its journey around the sun, predicting it could disintegrate before its closest approach, or perihelion, on September 27th. This prediction stems from his extensive research into split and dissolving comets. Dr. Sekinina cites several scientific reasons for his conclusion, asserting that while the comet's fragmentation before perihelion is a risky prediction, the evidence suggests it's a plausible outcome. According to Dr. Sekinina, the comet likely won't get the chance to put on a dazzling display in October, as many had hoped. Interestingly, the broader astronomy community is divided on this issue. For instance, Joseph Marcus, a pathologist with a long-standing interest in comets, supports Dr. Sekinina's perspective. Having closely monitored comets for decades, Marcus now believes that the comet is more likely to disintegrate before it entertains us with a visual spectacle, deferring to Sekinina's expertise. On the other hand, not everyone is convinced. Nick James, director of the Comet Section of the British Astronomical Association, and Dr. Clay Sherrod from the Arkansas Sky Observatories, express skepticism. They observe no signs of the non-gravitational accelerations that typically indicate a comet is breaking apart. James finds no convincing evidence of fragmentation, while Dr. Sherrod confidently states that the comet appears stable and intact. Adding to the optimistic side of the debate, Amateur astronomer Taras Pristavsky from Lviv, Ukraine, has noted some promising observations. He recently photographed the comet and observed an ion tail, which usually suggests a healthy nucleus. This has left a glimmer of hope among some astronomy enthusiasts and professionals alike. Daniel Green, from the Central Bureau for Electronic Telegrams, CBT, also leans towards cautious optimism, stating that the comet appears healthy and that any disintegration signs are yet to surface. He suggests taking a wait-and-see approach, implying that the ultimate fate of the comet will become clearer as we approach late September. The unpredictable nature of comets makes forecasting their behavior notoriously tricky. This sentiment is echoed in the words of the late great Yogi Berra, who once said, It's difficult to make predictions, especially about the future. Indeed, while Comet Tsuchinshan Atlas's brightness had stagnated from mid-April through June, recent observations show an uptick hinting at potential resilience. Currently, the comet is approximately 158 million miles from the sun and is moving through a region where frozen gases start vaporizing. Should it survive this part of its journey, it will face intense temperatures exceeding 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit at perihelion, conditions that could lead to its dramatic disintegration. To put this in perspective, imagine pouring hot tea into a cold glass, the drastic temperature change is akin to what Tsuchinshan Atlas will endure, a shock that might shatter it into pieces. However, history provides examples of comets defying the odds. Take the case of Comet Lovejoy in 2011, which survived a close encounter with the sun and shone brightly for observers, only to disintegrate later. Similarly, Comet Hale-Bopp was once feared to be a flop, but turned into a spectacular visual treat. Ultimately, the comet's future remains uncertain. 
Dr. Sekinina's paper, titled Inevitable Endgame for Comet Suchinshan Atlas, offers a compelling argument, yet as Yogi Berra wisely put it, it ain't over till it's over. For now, it's a celestial drama that will unfold in the weeks to come, keeping both skeptics and optimists on the edge of their seats. Let's move on to a thrilling piece of news about the European Space Agency's cutting-edge mission, the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, or JUICE for short. This August, JUICE is set to pull off an ambitious and groundbreaking maneuver known as a Lunar Earth flyby. Now, what makes this event so exciting and innovative is that it's the first ever attempt to use both the moon's and Earth's gravity to alter the spacecraft's trajectory toward Jupiter. Why is this important, you ask? Well, the gravity of these celestial bodies will essentially act as a cosmic slingshot, adjusting Juice's speed and direction without the need for massive amounts of fuel. It's a high-stakes, high-reward strategy that has been meticulously planned for over 20 years. Following its launch in April 2023, this lunar Earth flyby is essentially Juice's first waltz through the solar system, setting the stage for its epic journey to Jupiter. During the flyby, Earth's gravity will bend Juice's path, effectively breaking it and redirecting it for a close encounter with Venus in August 2025. From there, Venus and Earth will provide critical energy boosts, akin to drinking three back-to-back -back espressos to propel Juice on its way to Jupiter. But why take such a complicated route? Jupiter, after all, is just 800 million kilometers away from Earth on average. The thing is, sending Juice straight to Jupiter would need an enormous rocket and a whopping 60,000 kilograms of onboard propellant, an impossible feat with current technology. Not to mention, Juice would still need additional fuel to slow down enough to enter Jupiter's orbit rather than shooting straight past it. So Juice takes the scenic route, using the gravitational pull of other planets to carefully adjust its trajectory. This complex and constantly evolving route has been planned by Juice's mission analysis team, making the Lunar Earth flyby an essential first step. Instead of speeding Juice up, this maneuver will actually slow it down, a counterintuitive but more efficient shortcut through the inner solar system. Mission operators have already fine-tuned Juice's path to ensure it approaches both the Moon and Earth at just the right time, speed, and direction. Despite the confidence of the scientists involved, this mission is fraught with risks. According to Juice's spacecraft operations manager, Ignacio Tanko, it's like passing through a very narrow corridor, very, very quickly, pushing the accelerator to the maximum when the margin at the side of the road is just millimeters. As you can imagine, JUICE will come incredibly close to both the Moon and Earth, requiring real-time pinpoint accuracy in all its navigation maneuvers. From August 17th to the 22nd, JUICE will maintain continuous contact with ground stations worldwide, allowing mission operators to keep a careful watch on the spacecraft and make any necessary adjustments. And here's where science gets even more exciting. During this flyby, all of JUICE's 10 science instruments will be activated, collecting invaluable data. This maneuver provides a rare opportunity for instrument teams to test and calibrate their equipment on actual celestial surfaces, something that will be crucial for JUICE's eight-year journey to Jupiter. One particular focus will be the Radar for Icy Moon Exploration, or RIME, instrument. The team noticed some electronic noise affecting RIME, and the lunar flyby will offer a vital chance to observe how this noise impacts the instrument's performance and work on an algorithm to correct it. If you're lucky enough, you might even catch a glimpse of JUICE as it flies directly over Southeast Asia and the Pacific Ocean. Powerful binoculars or a telescope will give you the best chance to see the spacecraft. Moreover, JUICE's onboard cameras will be snapping photos throughout the flyby, which will be shared publicly on social media and ESA's Rocket Science blog. There you have it, a risky, bold maneuver set to propel Juice on an unforgettable journey to the giant planet, Jupiter. It's a magnificent testament to human ingenuity and the relentless quest for knowledge about our universe. Have you ever imagined a hip-hop song bouncing off another planet? Well, that imagination just turned into reality. In an extraordinary blend of art and science, NASA's Deep Space Network has achieved a remarkable milestone by transmitting a hip-hop song to Venus for the very first time. The track in question is The Rain, Supa Dupa Fly, by the iconic Missy Elliott. This song selection is not only historic, 
but also symbolizes a fascinating crossover between space exploration and popular culture. At precisely 10.05 a.m. PDT on July 12th, a monumental event took place as the song's inspirational message and lyrics were beamed 158 million miles from Earth to Venus. The idea behind this initiative was driven by NASA's desire to push boundaries, a sentiment that resonates deeply with Missy Elliott's illustrious career. Brittany Brown, director of digital and technology at NASA's Office of Communications, shared that Missy Elliott's music often incorporates space themes and futuristic visual storytelling, making her an ideal partner for this -this out-of-this-world project. The collaboration signifies not just a technological feat, but also an artistic endeavor that highlights the creative ways in which space can intersect with everyday life on Earth. The song's journey was facilitated by the Deep Space Network, a system renowned for supporting communications with spacecraft, probing the far reaches of our solar system. The DSN comprises an array of giant radio antennas, strategically located around the world. For this special mission, the 34-meter-wide Deep Space Station 13, situated in the Goldstone Complex in California, was responsible for sending the music into space. Interestingly, this antenna is also whimsically nicknamed Venus, which adds a humorous serendipity to the mission. Missy Elliott was ecstatic about this musical venture, expressing her astonishment and honor at having her song beamed into the cosmos. For her, Venus represents strength, beauty, and empowerment, making it the perfect celestial destination for her art. This project aligns with NASA's broader objectives, offering a unique platform to demonstrate the intersection of music, culture, and cutting-edge space technology. For NASA's Deep Space Network, this wasn't the first musical transmission, but it marked the first time a hip-hop song was transmitted. This innovative project reflects the DSN's vast capabilities, demonstrating its ability to maintain communication with spacecraft journeying far beyond our blue planet. It's intriguing to ponder that the same network used to send commands to robotic explorers and receive scientific data from asteroid missions is also transmitting music that represents human culture and creativity. The Deep Space Network continues to be a beacon of extraordinary technological prowess, and this mission serves as an inspiring example of breaking conventional boundaries. Missy Elliott's The Rain, Supa Dupa Fly, now echoes beyond Earth, sharing a piece of our world with the universe and, who knows, perhaps sparking the interest of future generations in both music and space exploration. This endeavor helps in reaching out to a broader audience, showing that space is not just a domain of science, but also a canvas for our artistic expressions. To follow more about DSN's incredible feats and other exciting NASA missions, you can visit NASA's website and stay tuned for more remarkable stories linking Earth to the stars. And just like that, our music leaps from record studios to interstellar heights, proving once again that the sky is not the limit, but just the beginning. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Astronomy Daily. I'm Anna. And I hope you enjoyed our journey through the latest space news. Don't forget to visit our website at astronomydaily.io, where you can sign up for our free daily newsletter, track the latest astronomy news, and listen to all our previous episodes. See you next time.